Well, I want to talk about the city budget. The city of Seattle is projected to have a revenue shortfall of $224 million beginning in 2025. The city's mandated by the state to pass a balanced budget, so the only options to address that deficit are either raising revenue or cutting services. Yeah. Which one of those is, or what combination of those is your approach? Yeah, it, it, it might be a more, I respectfully you know, reject the paradigm, it's one or the other. Um, you know, cutting or modifying maybe. And we can consider new revenue opportunities, but I think my starting place is operating with the existing, within existing state law. Meaning, you know, we have to, we have to have a balanced budget and start with whatever city budget we do have in place. And, you know, so that's, that's my starting point. We need to identify what's working, like working well, spending wise, what kind of you know, like I, I personally support audits of of city budgets, independent third party audits, even uh, of city budgets, um, potentially across the board to 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 identify and regular ongoing moni- like monitoring and systems evaluations to make sure we're getting the the bang for our buck and making sure whatever dollars we're spending are wisely spent, um, and we can shift you know reshift or or, you know, reallocate resources to, to areas of greater need and greater impact, potentially, depending, well, on, but depending on the opportunity. And, and then from there... I guess starting in the frame, just to help clarify the frame. So if we are working within the city budget and starting with the existing city budget, what we're moving to needs to be $224 slimmer than what currently is. So, so I think audits are wonderful things. I think they're actually an underutilized resource uh, for many um, and, and, and not a tool of punishment, but a tool of discovery. Yeah. Um, but, but if you do have to cut, if, if you are starting from the point of let's take this budget and see where we can trim, where are you starting? What, where would you prioritize those cuts? Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to prioritize any specific area. I'm not going to come in and target any specific area. Instead, I'm going to approach it with a curious mind and, you know, figure out w- what are those programs and services that are that are well delivered, well administered and we're seeing results for. And what are what are, you know, other opportunities where they either need potentially additional investment or maybe reinvestment and, and kind of going from there. And then, you know, that that's that's kind of like the framing that that I kind of view this as. And then from there, if, if an existing, so if, if everything, after all that work, you know, it's a set of, you know, it, it, it's a spectrum, a set of analysis that, that kind of run side by side and in parallel. But, you know, from there, let's look at, so taking the issue of homelessness, for example. Homelessness is certainly a Seattle problem, uh, but it is not a Seattle only problem. The, the issue of homelessness in this city is is a regional problem it's a county problem it's a state problem and it's a it, it's a federal problem and it's a share so i think not only should we not try and solve the 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 issue whatever the issue is whatever the challenge is alone and in a silo we need to look to those other partners and other governments for design helping to co-design and co-engineer the policy solution uh Step one. Step two is we also need to look to them for, you know, like help funding the, the specific solutions as well. Um, so, you know, I would push for more. That's one area where I would, I would push for more funding of, of uh, you know, like the shared responsibility model. And from there, let's explore public private partnerships, building housing, affordable housing. You know, there's organizations and private organizations, including some companies who, you know, want, want to contribute. Uh, and, and help address the problem. And so working collaboratively with them to figure out what's doable, uh, how we can potentially close some of those gaps and fund them. And then, and then let's look at new revenue opportunities after that. And I know there's this new progressive revenue task force or whatever that it's been rebranded. It's called something else in Seattle now, but, uh, and then, and then let's look at new revenue potentials and opportunities, but there's like, I, I kind of think about it, it, it more than just like, a, yeah, I, I, I try to, I try to avoid the either or, um, 
I mean, but isn't that, wouldn't that be the position that you're in when you're elected? You have to trim the budget by $224 million, absent finding new revenue, which is going to take a little bit to trickle in and get started anyway. So you're going to have to make that call as a council member, right? I'm, I'm going to have to make the call to be the be a responsible steward of whatever dollars we are spending. I'm going to have to make the call of being, uh, you know, doing my due diligence to make sure that we're operating within the existing city budget, identifying, you know, system deficiencies and opportunities to to improve and streamline and allocate and sometimes reallocate resources. Uh, yes. Gotcha. Okay. And the last thing I just want to touch on is, is um, you know, back to a budget issue, those progressive revenue task force recommendations that did come out, um, especially now before this revenue shortfall. So if, if dramatic cuts are to be avoided, there does need to be some new revenue in place. Do you support or, or will you be advocating for any of the recommendations from the progressive revenue task force or any other ideas you have. Yeah. yeah. Thank Thank you, Crystal. Um, so and we talked a little bit about my, like kind of how I view the budget and operating with the existing, looking to, you know, additional government partners at all levels and, and funding sources and public private partnerships. And then, and then, you know, expanding, uh, looking at new revenue sources. And, but you asked a question about potential new revenue sources and from, from this report, I am most keenly interested in learning more about the vacant, vacant home, vacant lot uh, tax idea. That, that seems to be potentially, I don't know, we, we, I would love to learn more and explore and closely study, examine the feasibility of that. But that seems to be just the most low-hanging fruit opportunity in terms of one creating revenue we shouldn't just create revenue for the sake of it you know it should, should have a purpose and an incentive and disincentive, disincentive structure behind it i think that that will help address the um affordability crisis and 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 making sure we have beneficial use of of living space uh at all times and incentivize people to actually use stuff so uh but so that's one thing i'm i'm keenly interested personally in, in, in learning more about and exploring. Um, yeah. Got it. 